The big news in Europe, of course, is the unification of Europe. Ever since 1947, uh, Europe has been moving towards unity. And of course, they're in rocky times now, but they've always been in rocky times, and it's a stuttering two steps forward, one step back. But, you know, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a need for Europe to integrate their economies so they don't have a war and so they work together and trade together efficiently. Can you imagine in 1947, when uh, European statesmen got together and uh, in the rubble of a bombed out continent, the second time in their lifetime that, they, that the continent had destroyed itself basically with a horrific war, World War I, World War II. And they said, look, we gotta do something or we're gonna do this again, this is insane. We need to create a European Union, a United States of Europe, so that our economies are so integrated that we just, it's inconceivable that we would go to war again and again. They have little peripheral wars maybe, but Germany and France, that's where you have your real war. That is not gonna happen, okay? Now Europe, in spite of all of its foibles, the economy is so interwoven that it's just inconceivable that France and Germany would go at it again as they had so many times in the past. As Europe has united, it's created a Euro zone and a free trade zone. Now, the goal is to compete with the United States. We are a free trade zone of 300 million people producing $15 trillion a year. They are a free trade zone of 400 million people producing $15 trillion a year. Just to put it in perspective, okay? We're less people, they're a little more people, we produce the same. Now, a lot of Americans who are inclined to be threatened by Europe's socialism would put down Europe and say, look at these people, they make less money than us. They got all these liberal ideas, you know? Uh, they make less money than us. Well, they do make less money than us, but that's not the full sentence. They make less money per person, but they choose to work 20% less hours than we do, and by every measure, they make as much as we do per hour. They're just not working themselves quite so quickly into an early grave. Now they're having a reality check where they actually have to work a little harder. I mean, that's the problem in Greece, is just they're consuming way more than they're producing, and they're retiring when they're 55 years old. It's just not sustainable. And you can't say, would you mind working for another 10 years? They're gonna say, yes, I would, I'm retiring at 55. <laughs> so you have to have this catastrophe they're having now to straighten that out. But when you travel through Europe, you find all sorts of interesting, stimulating, challenging sort of uh, things to observe. I, it's a Tuesday afternoon in, in Holland and I'm walking down the canal and I see these men. These are grown men, these are not students, these are men, they should be working and they're just having a party. And I ask them, what's going on? It's a work day. It's Tuesday afternoon, we play. Uh, you wanna come in? No, I'm working, you know. But uh, the Europeans just know how to play. They've got all sorts of interest in, in uh, you know, living, uh, well, what is it, working to live, not living to work. Uh, and they're, they're very proud about that. Now, of course, they, they work and they produce. They're every bit as invested in their stock market as we are in ours. They just uh, have longer vacations and uh, more uh, entitlements and, and more safeguards and, and all that kind of stuff that we hear about a lot. Now, when you think about what's going on out there and in Europe on the streets and in Occupy Washington and so on, there's gonna be a lot of um, chaos, basically, as the societies try to rejigger the wealth to see where it should be. Now, when you look at the demonstrations that are going on in Europe, and you're gonna see a lot of them in the future, and I talk about this because I think it's wrong for people not to go to Europe because they think there's gonna be riots in the street. Europeans always march. They love to march, it's part of their freedom. They, for me, it's a healthy thing, a manifestation. I've been in Europe in so many million person marches and if my parents are watching the news, they're thinking I'm in trouble, you know? No, they're just, the teachers are angry, everybody's in support of them, it's a national strike and everybody's marching. Uh, that's what they do. It's, it's too much exercise for most Americans, but uh, <laughs> the Europeans march. Now, the, I think the problem in our country and in Europe is we've all conned ourselves into thinking we're wealthier than we are. You know, you had a half million dollar house, suddenly it's worth a million dollars, and then you turn around, it's worth half a million again. You didn't lose half a million dollars. You thought your house appreciated it there, but it never was that valuable anyways. You got accustomed to that, and then it settled back down to reality. You, we need to get our feet on the ground. A third of our graduates from Ivy League, I believe, go into finance. You know, just thinking it's an easy, easy place to score really big money. This is nothing new. I was just standing on the most lavish buildings in all of Europe, 300, 400 years old. These are palaces that are every bit as fancy as Schönbrunn and Versailles. And they were all owned by what they called financiers. 
you know, hedge fund managers. People with unthinkable wealth didn't know what to do with it, so they buy these Louis XIV style homes and have miles of gardens just to spend their money. Well, this is just, an, they had a revolution. Sometimes you have a different way, but you get society out of whack that way, and there's an adjustment. In Europe, they have these lavish entitlements that put ours to shame. In Scandinavia, you get 16 months of paid parental leave to be split any way you like between mom and dad. It's use it or lose it. Most Americans would scoff at that. What are you talking about? You can't have a society where people get to stay home after they have a child. You know, we have family values, but you gotta go right back to work. <laughs> now, I'm not saying one's right or wrong. In fact, I'm really glad I'm running my business here in the United States. It's a much better environment for an entrepreneur like me. But my friends in Europe, would not want to work the way we work. They prefer to work the way they work. They have plenty of opportunity to work, and work hard and get ahead, but it's moderated there, as you might imagine. Now, if you want to look at what's happening in Europe, they have these lavish entitlements based on the old days when there was a very young society, a lot of people working, not many people living to retirement, and those who do retire with the great promise don't live very long. As long as that's the arrangement, you can sustain it forever. Suddenly you get really wealthy, you get really well educated, you get really smart and you have smaller families. That's what happens when societies get wealthy and educated. Less kids. And then they live longer. They all retire and they live a long time after that. There's not enough kids working to keep the rich people comfortable, right? So what do you got to do? You got to tell these people who worked with the promise of a lavish retirement for 30 years, it's different now. We got to change the rules and you got to work 10 more years. That's what happened in Greece last year. If your friend is one year older than you and they got in and then you got into the same job, you worked just as hard for 30 years, your friend's retired and you got to work 10 more years. That's enough to get you down there burning a Starbucks also. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's going on in Europe. Uh, it's interesting, it's gonna be a very tough thing because by the nature of democracy, people don't like a politician who tells them the truth. You know, you, you throw them out and you get a politician that tells you what you wanna hear. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to re-figure re it out. You can still rearrange the furniture and all consume more than you produce, you see. So it's a very interesting time and I love watching it. I was just in Europe. I was just in Greece. I was just in Athens. Everything's fine over there. Don't not go to Europe because they're in financial crisis and chaos. The, the sky is not falling. You wouldn't want to be a worker there who worked all your life for a retirement because you're not going to have one. But if you're a tourist going over there, have a nice lunch and to see the museum and take a hike, it's, it's better than ever as far as I'm concerned. The big